G'day and welcome to Australian Veteran News. My name's Eamon and for part three uh, of this chat, I'm joined by Jeb Summers. Uh, in part one, Jeb talked to us about um, his journey in terms of being a rifleman uh, from the 5th Battalion Royal Australian Regiment. We haven't discussed what Jeb did to get posted to 5 hour, but I think we can just skip over that. Um, in part two, Jeb talked about his own mental health journey. And, uh, and one of the things we finished on was Ward 17, but we also went to what Jeb's doing now, which is Save Our Services Australia. So Jeb, I mean, the floor is yours. Tell us what is Save Our Services Australia and what are you trying to achieve? Yeah, sure. So our goal is like uh, many other ex-service uh, organisations, our ultimate goal is to uh, stop or stem the suicide rates of ex-servant personnel. And for us, that includes ex-defence, uh, police, fire, ambulance and SES. Um, obviously, being Australian Veteran News, um, I won't be addressing parts about police, fire, ambulance and SES. We'll be solely talking about veterans. Happy for you to cover it all, but so that it's, a, it's a fairly broad brush. You're covering a, a, a big area there, but it's, it's obviously something you're passionate about. Um, so why does it exist? What's the, what's the purpose of it? Yeah, sure. So why does it exist? We probably covered that off with the goal. Um, so what are we currently doing? Obviously, we're advocating to uh, local and federal MPs about changing the system. Obviously, uh, myself, I've been right through the system. So I know the faults. And I'm able to come up with solutions, viable solutions that can be implemented to help make change. Uh, that in itself is really tough talking to MPs because they, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. They're all happy to jump on the bandwagon uh, saying, we support you, thank you for your service, but no one wants to hear the idea of change. Uh, that's why we're calling for a Royal Commission. Um, obviously, Save Our Services Australia is on board with the call for a Royal Commission. We need to have this Royal Commission. Um, what are we currently doing? Yep, so we covered off advocacy. Um, we're also uh, trying to work, work, work in with, uh, with the local ward, Ward 17. And we're also trying to work in with um, every ex-service uh, organisation with the goals the same as ours. Yeah. What I find is there's a lot of organisations that don't play very nice in the sandpit. Uh, we're not one of them. We're very approachable. And if I see some organisation that's doing something better than us, or is it implementing something that we're not implementing? Well, I'm not gonna go do what that organisation's doing. I'm gonna ask that organisation, hey, can we help? Can we support you? Uh, and, and how can we do that? And a prime example is, I'll mention there's a uh, service up in uh, NT called Reeling for Veterans. Right. Uh, I spoke to the president once and I think they're doing an amazing job up there. Basically, they take uh, serving veterans and ex-serving veterans out that are going through mental health issues. They take them out fishing. Um, if they want to have a chat, they have a chat, but it's just at a Fishing for some is therapeutic. I, I like fishing and very therapeutic. You know, out there, it's really quiet. Just waiting for a fish to bite. Sometimes you don't really care if a fish is biting or not. Um, well, this is, and this yeah, ties so in with, look, it ties in with one of the things you were talking about before is, is having that support network, having that group of people around you who understands you and, and, and can help you through it. Just, just to pause, and what you're saying is fantastic. I want to take you back slightly because... It's the second time you've said it, the thank you for your service. What does thank you for your service mean to you? How, how, when someone says that to you, what does it mean to you? To, to be honest, it's a spit in the face. It's an absolute garbage cop out that, um, that federal and local members think they can say to a veteran and, and think, hey, we're going to say thank you for your service, but we're not going to take any of your suggestions or ideas or even conceive any of your conceptions or take them to discuss. It's just a cop-out. It's an okay. absolute cop-out. Yeah. And uh, going back again, is, is you said, um, Save Our Services is on board for the Royal Commission, the Royal Commission into Veteran Suicide. 
Why is that? Why do you think a Royal Commission is, is the right thing to do uh, compared to the National Commissioner? Yeah, well, look, we look at all these, I read all these commission reports about veteran suicide rates, statistics, um, you know, certain percentages that we're above and below. And look, mate, those reports, some of them are just absolute garbage. They, they, they don't include all the suicides. Like if you've got someone that's taking their life by smashing their car into a tree, it's going to fall underneath a, a car accident. So they don't take into account that. They don't come with statistics on how many people have actually attempted. I would hate to think of how many uh, veterans or ex-service members had actually, uh, had taken, they'd tried to take their own life and not succeeded because that figure itself would be phenomenal. It yeah. would be, it would, the public would just be gobsmacked by it. Yeah, it, it is terrifying, isn't it? That the idea of that is terrifying that, um, and it's a 120 year old problem. I, I think um, this is your interview, but I'm gonna steal it for a couple of minutes. It's one of the things I was doing today was looking at newspaper clippings. The earliest one is from 1903. Um, and it, it's a suicide of a veteran who was found in the Yarra River, who's come back from the Boer War um, and was, I think the phrase is off color. They use the phrase off color or something similar to that and, and drowned himself in the Yarra River. Um, you know, this is something that's been going on for, for 120 years and, and we still don't have well, we, we don't have answers. Maybe there's no answers, but we're lacking solutions. We're lacking ideas. We're, we don't even know what the question is a lot of the time, I think. Well, the, the, the solutions, like ex-organisations, ex-service organisations are constantly putting out solutions. People like myself that have been through the system, that have seen the fault, constantly putting forward solutions. The problem we have is no one's listening. Yeah. No one is listening. Well, how, how do you feel? You're running a charity now. It's a not-for-profit. Um, you're, you're advocating. You're speaking to people. Do you feel like your voice is getting heard? With politicians, no. I, I'm getting nowhere. I'm beating on a door and no one's answering. Who is? It's listening? always the same cop-out line. I get them all the time. Thank you for your service, Mr. Jeb Summers. We appreciate what you're trying to do, Mr. Jeb Summers. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, so, um, well, we've already sort of covered it, but but what is Save Our Services trying to do? What's the what's the end game for you? What what's the where do you go from here? Well, that's our goal again to stop or stem the suicide rates of ex-service personnel. And you know, look, if we we can save just a couple, you know, we we're pulling our weight, we're doing our bit. Yeah. And I believe with some of the programs that we'll talk about, yeah, we, we've definitely got the right ideas. And some of the programs where we're working in with other uh, organisations, well, we've got the right ideas as well. Well, let, let's do it. Let's talk about the programs. What's what's in the pipeline? Yeah, sure. Well, look, I want to just reverse back. Yeah. On, uh, we're working in with X organisations. We talked about that really for veterans. I've explained what that is. I've explained what an amazing job they're doing. They're based, uh, they're based in the NT. So I rang them up or I got in touch with the person. And I said, hey, listen, really love what you're doing. I love the idea. I love the concept. No one around Australia, as far as I know, is doing what you guys are doing. Yeah, okay. I go, now, I think you've got an amazing concept. How can we assist you to implement such a program down in Victoria? I go, listen, I've got a massive idea. I go, why don't we run a fishing competition for veterans? Yeah. where we can get veterans out in a boat. We, we organise all these boats to go out. Obviously, because of their charity status being an NT, they can't fly underneath their banner. So we'll fly Save Our Service Australia, but it'll be for reeling for veterans. Um, obviously, they'll, it, it's not there to raise money for their organisation. We've talked about that. It's there to get their name out there and about. Um, so, look, I thought it was great. I thought, hey, you know, we do this, we can offer some prizes for some veterans. Let's get them out fishing for free. You know, make new friends, jump on a boat. Obviously, the coronavirus has, has slowed everyone down. So that program is currently on hold. Um, we'll be addressing him again to uh, recommence that. Yeah, I, I just... So think that, that's just one of the ways. Um, we're also working in with 
are so uh, active. I'm uh, friends with the person running that in Melton. Uh, and look, you know, they're great again, like at what they're doing. They're uh, uh, promoting a culture of paintballing. Like they're doing stuff that yeah. uh, younger veterans would enjoy doing. They're, they're, they're bonding, they're bonding. And that's really important. Um, the biggest thing is, as you know from the mental health training course, is to stop isolation. We need to get people socially active. So yeah. I really commend RSL Active, especially RSL Active Melton, who I've dealt with, uh, with what they're doing. That's another one. I, I can, the list goes on. No, I, there, I, there's I, so many, but I don't want to go off on a tangent and talk about every single one that we're working in with. Yeah, we'll be here a lot. What you're saying is great, though, and it is, it's a critical point. You have a, um, you talked about your own your isolation. Um, you know, I, I, it's counterfactuals and, and going down rabbit holes are no good. But, but had you had that support network, had you had a group of people around you to look after you, had you had people, people there to catch you when you fell, um, and had you had people, ex-army people, ex-defence force people there to look after you, um, you know, it might have been different. Um, so. So in terms of that, how long has Save Our Services been around for? How long have you been going for now? All right, yep. No, I, look, I just want to track back, and I don't want to go off on a tangent here, but yeah. isolation is a really big issue. Mm. And look, because of coronavirus, we're forcing people into isolation, and it's costing us. Like, yeah. I, I honestly just went out on my phone two seconds ago. Well, like, we were having a break, and there's another veteran that's taken their own life. We're seeing... We're seeing two or three a week now. The last month has just been brutal. Yeah. But we won't go off on a tangent. I just no. want to highlight that isolation is really bad. Well, I think it is important. So, I mean, we're recording this on the 19th of November. Um, I, I know of, uh, and, and I'm not claiming friendship or association, but I know of three veterans um, amongst my peer group who, or oh, sorry, what am I trying to say? I know of three veterans who've, who've ended their own lives in the last uh, two weeks now. Um, and I know that because of my friends are, are friends with them. Um, it, it is a community we, we people know each other. Um, it's a small community. You know, whether the person you're talking about is a, is a totally different one. I, I did see yesterday at the Senate committee into veteran suicide, they discussed the number or one of the witnesses discussed, um, one witness said five and another, another person said six veterans have ended their own lives in the last two weeks. Um, no one knows the real numbers. Yeah, it's a worry. It, not a worry. No one's keeping the statistic properly. It's yeah. just a jumbled mess. Well, it's terrifying. It's and terrifying. This is why we, again, this is why we need a royal commission. Yeah, okay. We need people to be accountable. We need these numbers to be accountable. How can we implement services if we don't really know the the effect and toll this is taking? If we don't know the correct numbers, like, come on. It's simply a joke. It's, um, <laughs> it's a great point. I, I, I can't agree with you more. And it's, it, it's, this isn't a new problem. Like I said before, this isn't a new thing. This isn't something, this isn't just the Afghan, Iraq, East Timor generation who are choosing to earn their own lives. It's, you know, our, our Vietnam generation saw it before us, the Korea, you know, Malaya, Korea, Second World War, First World War, the Boer War. You know, since Australia has been federated, We've had a problem with veterans killing themselves. Um, yeah. So I will say something on. I will say something on that. I don't want to cut you off, Eamon, but uh, I agree totally with everything you're saying. Uh, I suppose during the uh, coming back from Vietnam, what we did have in place that we don't have in place now, and yeah. not many people know, is we had more facilities. So I know personally the whole of Heidelberg Hospital was a veteran hospital yeah um and slowly because we no longer had these wars we no longer had these conflicts it's always going to happen they slowly start releasing back these facilities to the public and that that's what happened and that's why we've got massive waiting times because yeah. we no longer have the facilities and we haven't built back these facilities that were at our disposable uh, at, at our dispose uh post vietnam Absolutely. And I'm not saying it's any easier for the Vietnam boys. I'm not saying they had it any easier. I don't want that being taken out of context. No, absolutely. I'm solely pointing out that we had a lot more facilities because they'd planned 
that war was happening. So they expanded the facilities, but we haven't done this time. We haven't done that this time. Well, and, and in the 1970s, I mean, the repatriation hospitals were still there from the first and second world wars and they were still relevant to blokes, especially the blokes who came back from the second world war. They were still going to those hospitals. Whereas 50 years later, um, we've seen the repatriation hospitals have been handed from, um, handed over to the States. And, and as a consequence, um, if you you highlighted it beautifully. Ward 17 has no crisis care for someone who needs it right then and there. And as a consequence, you went to a public hospital around people who don't understand what you're going through and are going on a totally different journey. Um, yep. You know, and, and again, I just want to highlight that is not Ward 17's fault. No, absolutely. Um, and we are and I, there totally to support that facility. Yep. And it's taken me a long time to work myself in a position where I could be there helping and assisting. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't want any comments taken out of context. We totally support that facility. It, it, it isn't their, their problem that we're in this situation. It no. goes to state Great and point. federal. Yeah. And then Ward 17, I've never heard a bad word said about it. I mean, the, that it is a place that saves lives over and over and over and over again. Ward 17 saves people's lives. Um, yeah, and, definitely. And we want to expand it. If you know, from what you've said tonight, we want to expand it. We want to make it bigger. We want to have it spread even further. Um, look, I, we, we've spoken about save our services and, and what you're doing in the future. Um, you can keep going if you want to talk even more about what the options are. Um, yeah, I just want to look. We we spoke yeah. about how we're working in with organisations. So I'd like to address and say what we're personally doing. Yeah, please. as an organisation that is different to other organisations. So I'll say two things that we've implemented. The first being, uh, I went down to Ward 17, I had a donator, a uh, private donator, um, which I can, yeah, I'll get their name a bit later. Uh, private, I just can't think of the top of my no, mind in the no. sun. Orbit. But uh, they helped us. I, I talked down to Ward 17 and again, it comes back to social networks are really important. Well, you're in, uh, well, you're going through care because you need your, uh, you need your family, you need your friends, you, know, you need your support network. So that is um, key. So my idea down Ward 17 was I thought, hey, there's a lot of members that come down from country Victoria, their families can't travel and see them. You know, if That's it's two, three, four hour, five, five hour drive, they can't drive down and see them. So I proposed to Ward 17 that we get iPads for each room for the facility, which we would uh, supply. Uh, we went back and forth and Ward 17 decided it could be detrimental to their health. We agreed with Ward 17. So I, I went back to the drawing board. I said, hey, I've still got this donator. Can we at least get you a, uh, a, a computer, a new computer for the social lounge? That way you can have uh, supervised video calls where they can FaceTime their family and they're, they're right in the social room where everyone can see them. And they go, yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. happy to do that. So look, it, take, it took us months of planning, but we finally got a U-Buke computer down Ward 17 that we're really proud of. Yeah. And, and this is because you understand what it's like. This is, you know, you're not, you're not coming this at- is, This is me finding the problems yep. and thinking up, well, I've had this problem, what's the solution? Yeah. Yeah, well, and, and this is, I think this is one of the, the unique things, maybe not unique, but one of the things veterans are really good at is is identifying yep. problems and finding solutions. That Then from the moment you go, you start your basic training, whether it's at Wagga, Cerberus or Kapuka or RMC or whatever, um, you're told, don't come to me with problems, come to me with solutions. And you're, you're identifying solutions. That's brilliant. Um, yeah, well, that's right. And, and look what I'll say about that with identifying solutions. Like, I'm the type of bloke that could talk about a solution like that particular instance so I just explained. And if that solution's not viable and we can't do that, I'll, I'll go back to the drawing boards. I'll think up again. Yeah. I, I, I don't mind people um, going, all right, that solution's not viable. They're still listening. It, the people I've got no time for are the politicians that give you the thank you for your service. No, I'm not listening. They're, they're, they're not listening. So, yeah. but anyway, don't want to go off on a tangent again. No, so I'm... we'll just go back into what, one more of the programs that we are trying to implement. Yeah, please. Um, obviously, uh, going through mental health awareness training has taught me one thing, and it's to stop isolation to get people socially active. So 
what Save Our Services is trying to do as part of our program, which we have not got up and running because coronavirus has actually drained our funds because we are self-funded. I have to go and, and, and do events. And we had a massive event planned Anzac Day with Brendan Vivola in memory of suicide victims. And it was going to be huge. It was going to fund us for the entire year. It didn't end up happening. So these programs, unfortunately, have been put on hold. But very importantly, one of the programs that we've been trying to introduce to get people socially active, active and we've already, already implemented on one, one member, a Vietnam member, is to find out what their loves and passions are. Um, we want to try and get people back into sport. Like if it's a younger fella and they're not physically injured, injured, injured we yep. want to be able to provide sponsorship to pay for them to play for the season. We want to get them to a team environment. It doesn't have to be with veterans, you know. It just has to be socially. It needs to be a commitment where they have to go out at least once, twice, three times a week. It's somewhere where they have to be, where... Yeah someone at the sport who's their mate will go, oh, you know, John, John hasn't been here for a bit. They might call me up and go, oh, what's going on with John? They'll let me know. And I'm able to suddenly uh, put, not necessarily myself, because I'm not a doctor, but yep. put people uh, in place that John could talk to and go, what's going on? You're isolated, isolated again. Yeah. Uh, for the members that are injured, um, that obviously need low impact sports. We're looking at stuff like uh, bowling club memberships. They have bionic arms. They have everything these days. So even people with a bad back can go down and go to the bowls club. I and every Saturday, that. you know, yeah. a lot of people gather down there, it's social. You're gonna make friends. And if people are nervous, well, me and one of my committee members will make sure that we go down for those first prior meetings, Yeah. you know, when they meet up the team. But we're really excited about trying to roll that out and we're hopefully going to try and roll that out with some of the Ward 17 members, uh, obviously after I get permission. And if when, if and when we get the funding, we need the funding to run this program. Well, if people do want to find you, if they want to find Save Our Services, if they want to donate, um, how can they do it? How can they find your... Yeah, yeah sweet. Yeah, Eamon, I really like that. Uh, get in touch with us. We've got our own Facebook page, Save Our Services Australia, Save Our Services Australia. Uh, look, that's got email contact. You can email me. Um, obviously, don't, uh, yeah, just go through our page, please. Don't private message me. Um, go through the page. Yeah, okay. Look, I really appreciate any of the support. Right, Jeb. So, we know how to get in touch with you now. Um, it's been really good, and I've really enjoyed this time we've had together. So, part one. We talked about your journey um, into the army and then in Afghanistan. Part two, we've talked about your mental health and how you've coped, um, how you well, where you are now, how you've got to where you are. This time, we've talked about Save Our Services of Australia. We've just covered off how to find you and how to fund you. Um, last question before we go into the last little part. But last question, Jeb, is what are we not talking about that we really should be? Yeah, sure. Well, um, yep, no worries. You know what? When you hit me up with this question today, I had to really think. So, Eamon uh, messaged me today, goes, yep, look, this is a question I want to ask you at the end. I've gone, oh, well, okay. That is a very, very good question. Thanks. So, one of the things, other things that Save Our Services did at the start when we first um, implemented uh, activities was we had someone approach us that did mental health first aid training offered to take all of summary RSL through yep. um, that training uh, we did that training and now over the top of the bar at the summary RSL club which I suggested we have all the photos of the people that are mentally health first aid accredited Right. that way when a digger comes in or when anyone comes in the first thing they do is go to the bar. They look up, they know who to have a chat to if they need to have a chat to. And these people are trained now to refer people onto the services. So going back to your question, I think, uh, so your question was, what, what do we need to uh, think about? What are we not talking about? Yeah. So I think, uh, well, they're starting to do it anyway. Open Arms is starting to do mental health first aid training and roll that out to any RSL club that will want to do it. 
Uh, however, they've got a huge waiting list. Well, we, we're talking months and months. So I think, and a lot of these clubs need this implemented, that mental first aid training needs to be mandatory at all RSL clubs. We need to have a few members at each RSL club uh, qualified because I know going to country Victoria, some of the RSLs out there are predominantly, predominantly the older generation. So you get a younger vet like myself coming inside uh, the facility and saying, hey, I have a problem. While well, the old, old fellas, and the, the um, hats off to them, you know, they, they've done their time, but they, they're not equipped to yeah. talk to this veteran about their problem. They don't know how to refer on to services. Uh, look, as you know, Eamon, sometimes you only get one chance with these vets. Yeah. If you don't catch them then and there, or you might not see them again. So, so that, that is one of the issues that isn't being spoken about. For that training, how do people do it? Uh, how can they do it? Well, yeah. obviously, if, if RSLs are keen on doing it, get in contact with Open Arms. Yeah. Uh, tell them that you've got X amount of people that need to run through this training. Uh, jump on the waiting list. That's the only way we can do it right now is to jump on that waiting list. But I highly advise any any RSL club that doesn't have members trained, get them trained. Fantastic. You're helping, uh, you're helping out the younger generation. You're helping out the Vietnam vets. You, you, you're helping out everyone by doing this course. Yeah. That's fantastic, Jeb. That's a, it's a really good point. And it's something I, I haven't thought about. I, I don't know anything about. And it's something I'm, I'm going to have to look into now because that's a, it's a great asset. It's a great thing to be able to do. Um, I think there's one more thing you want to say, uh, and then we'll, we'll close it up. So, I mean, go for it. I, I, I think it's really important. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So the, the other part of that, I added a bit to, to that as well. So, look, we've spoke about this and drummed on about this. There's not enough information available. So with the veterans struggling, there's not enough information available to uh, let them know what services are available. Um, with veteran employment, we haven't really touched on that, but no one really knows what their benefits are. Yeah. No one knows that there's, in Victoria alone, I know of at least two veteran employment agencies. Uh, you might be able to name off the top of your head, Eamon, if you want to give them a, uh, a plug up. Well, there's one, Veterans in Construction um, is, is relevant to you, working in construction. Um, they do fantastic work. Um, I know there's others. You've got me on the spot here. Um, yeah, no, that's right. So the other one is, um, 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 I just had it in my head. I just had it in my head. Ironside Recruitment. Ironside Recruitment. Ironside Recruitment, Recruitment is yep. also another veteran uh, employment agency in Victoria. So mental health, uh, mental health awareness, where to get help and support, uh, employment benefits, um, obviously the job agencies are available to you, maybe uh, training. I think that all needs to be, made. and this is spoken to RSL Australia, RSL Victoria. We need to have welcome packs. Yeah. Because these veterans like me, we come into the RSL, yes, I'm a member, but we don't know what we're entitled to. Yeah. I wouldn't know half the services that were available to mental health if I didn't go through my issues. And uh, geez, I'm lucky I found those services. I would hate to think how many people didn't find those services and couldn't wait that long to see their doctors or any of that. So we, we, we need to get these packages rolled out. So as soon as you join, there's a package. Here's your basic information. It's not hard. And yeah. it's not like a huge idea I'm inventing. I think that's brilliant, Jeb. Um... I mean, yeah, educate educate everyone as to what we're entitled to, and, and have have a welcome pack. <laughs> that, that simplicity is is fantastic, and that's as I said before, you're a veteran, you've identified a problem, you've found a solution. Um, I think that's brilliant, mate. I think it's a really good point to finish on as well. So, look, um, Jeb Summers, I really appreciate your time. We've we've gone from originally planning for you know 45 minutes yeah. to an hour, we've gone to an hour and a half, but. I think it's all valuable. I think it's all useful. And I, I really look forward to the next time we speak. So, you know, good on you tonight. And um, and I look forward to catching up with you in person when uh, when COVID sort of ends and we can we can really see each other. Thanks for your time. 
Yeah, no worries, mate. So just as a closing statement, I, I would yeah. probably just say to everyone that mental health is indiscriminate. It can hit you at any time. Uh, if you are struggling, you know, reach out. Eamon works for Hawthorne ISL Club. There's plenty of people out there. Overwatch, you know, look, if you need any of that information, contact my page, message my page, I'll refer you. I'd rather okay. have you contact me than, and have that conversation with me than not have that conversation at all. And Thank you so much for having me on today, Eamon. I really appreciate everything that we've talked about and hopefully we get a Royal Commission. Good on you, mate. Thanks very much and uh, have a good night. Thanks, mate.